بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the bounty of Islam and the bounty of the sunnah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the sunnah We had left off talking about the shurut the conditions for la ilaha illallah and before continuing from where we had left off we would like to just remind ourselves of the importance of this topic and the importance of this subject and how this is from rather we should say this is the most important thing and the most important topic for the muslim and that is the topic of at tawhid that they know and they understand what is at tawhid so that they may actualize and implement at tawhid live their lives upon at tawhid die while in a state of practicing and establishing at tawhid It was asked qila li wahab bin munabbih rahimahullahu ta'ala it was said unto him or he was asked we should say alaysa la ilaha illallah miftah al jannah he was asked he said the question that he asked him isn't it not the fact except that la ilaha illallah is the key to jannah the key to heaven is this not the case ma'am faqal so he said in response to this bala but of course but of course it is ma'am walakin but you see and and that's a very big word small but it has tremendous tremendous yani implications he says yes you know, he says uh, of course of course it is but or you can say however laysa miftah illa lahu asnan he says but there is not a key except that it has teeth right except that it has teeth you know the ridges the grooves that are inside of the the key the teeth of the key we understand the implications of having these teeth and not having these teeth but in any event he goes on and he says fa in ja'ta bi miftah lahu asnan futiha lak wa illa lam yuftah lak he said so if you come with the key and it has its teeth then it will be open for you it will be open for you and if it does not have the teeth and if not it it won't be open for you huh and if not meaning if it doesn't have the teeth then it won't be open for you and we know this is the case right if the key is cut slightly wrong right then it doesn't work because the teeth are not accurate so as to unlock that which it is a key to unlock so it is a must and it is incumbent that the key has its teeth so with this we understand that naam the pure articulation of la ilaha illallah then this won't be enough but we have to come with the the teeth we have to come with the teeth 
قال إمام ابن قيم رحمه الله تعالى inside of his tremendous and outstanding work inside of his tremendous and outstanding work and nuniya that poetry al qasida and nuniya that poem that is called the poem of nuniya naam nuniya and it's called nuniya because all of the words that end each line of poetry they end in the letter noon and this is why it's called nuniya nuniya naam qasida to nuniya in any event he mentions fil fasl miftah bab al jannah the opening of the door of jannah miftah bab al jannah the key the key to the door of jannah He says هذا فتح الباب ليس بممكن إلا بمفتاح على أسنان مفتاحه بشهادة الإخلاص والتوحيد تلك شهادة الإيمان أسنانه الأعمال وهي شرائع الإسلام والمفتاح Bil-asnani. The great Imam he mentions these beautiful lines of poetry, wherein he says, "And this is the opening of the door, or this opening of the door, then it will not be possible unless you come with the key that has its teeth. The opening of it." is with the shahada is with the testimony of sincerity shahadatul ikhlas the testimony of sincerity a la ilaha illallah wa tawhid and with tawhid with the true monotheism with the true monotheism naam wa tilka tilka shahadatul iman and this is the testimony of faith this is the testimony of faith asnanuhu al-a'mal its teeth its teeth then they are the actions then they are the actions wa hiya shara'i'u al-islam and the actions then they are the legislative actions of islam they are the legislative actions of islam and this is the key that has its teeth naam and this is the key that will have its teeth So with that it is a must that we understand and we step back for a minute and we understand this reality because if the teeth to this key if that is the actions those actions that are upon it tawhid those actions that are necessitated by a tawhid then as we know as we know from another standpoint al ilm قبل القول والعمل that knowledge precedes statements and actions so if the teeth are the actions that are necessitated by tawhid then we understand that what will have to come and what is vital and necessary to come before those actions is what is knowledge is knowledge right because how can we establish something that we are ignorant about it If we are ignorant about something how would it be possible for us to establish it how can we do it if we don't know how can we establish it if we don't know naam so it is a must that we have knowledge because in order to benefit from la ilaha illallah then what we have to know about it naam we have to believe in it correct naam we have to believe in it but how are we going to believe in it if we don't know about it in order to believe in it properly then we have to have knowledge of it we have to know what it is we have to know what is necessitated by it and so on and so forth we have to know this without knowing this it will be impossible for us to possibly believe in it it will be impossible we won't be able to believe in it unless we have knowledge of it كيف تؤمن بشيء تجهله how can you believe in something of which you are ignorant about it you can't it's not possible so in order for us to believe in it properly we have to know in order for us to 
establish it, then we have to know. We have to have knowledge. We have to have knowledge. And this brings us back to now why this is so important for us. Why this is so important for us to have knowledge of La ilaha illallah, to go over and to study with the proofs and the evidences. What are the conditions that are necessary in order for La ilaha illallah to truly benefit someone, to benefit someone? What are those conditions? In the last class, we took from the conditions four of them. We took four of the conditions inside of the last class. Right? Or, let me see. More correctly, we took three of them and we stopped before going into the fourth. We took three of them and we stopped before going into the fourth. Yeah. And the three in which we had taken was al-ilm, knowledge. That we have to have knowledge of la ilaha illallah. Secondly was al-yaqeen. We have to have certainty in la ilaha illallah. We have to know about it and then we have to be certain about it. Now, and thirdly, al-qubul. We have to accept it. We have to accept it. We have to accept it. Because if you don't accept it, even if you know about it and certain about its meaning, it won't benefit you. You have to accept it. Now, so we have to have knowledge about la ilaha illallah. We have to have knowledge of La ilaha illallah. We have to have certainty of its meaning. We have to know its meaning and we have to have certainty of, of its meaning. And we have to accept it. And we have to accept it. And you will see that these conditions, they are connected to one another. They are connected to one another. So that you find if one of them is missing, then everything falls apart. Everything falls apart. So we need them all. We need them all. And I want you to have this in your mind. This is a situation of all or nothing. Now, this is how I want you to think about it in your mind. This is a situation of all or nothing. That we have to have them all. And missing just one of them is not sufficient. It's not acceptable. Now, it's not acceptable. The fourth condition is Al-Inqiyad Al-Inqiyad Naam Al-Inqiyad Al-Munafi Al-Tark That is a compliance A compliance that negates Leaving or an abandonment of That we have to Be compliant to La ilaha illallah Wal-Inqiyad Wal-Istislam Lima دلت عليه المنافي للترك we have to have a compliance and with that compliance a submitting of ourselves to that which لا إله إلا الله points to that we submit ourselves to that which لا إله إلا الله points to نعم that type of compliance and that type of submission that will negate an abandonment it will negate an abandonment. Wamid Dalil. And what is the proofs and the evidences? What is the proofs and the evidences? And this is a reminder that everyone um, who is listening, Bithnilahi Ta'ala, please have a pen, have a paper. Have a pen and have a paper. Because I want you to write down these, uh, these references for the proofs and the evidences. If you can't write down the whole of the proof and the evidence or the translation thereof, then I want you to at least have its reference so that you may go back later after the class and go to the verse and go to the hadith and so on and so forth. Now, it's very important. It's very important. So to have for each condition, write down what is the condition and then the proofs and the evidences that are associated with that condition or the references to those proofs and evidences that are associated with that condition. Because it is a must that we have knowledge of our religion of I mainly with the proofs and the evidences. Now, this is a must. That we have knowledge of our religion with the proofs and the evidences. Because that is knowledge inside of the deen of Islam. Qal Allah, qal Rasulullah, qal Sahaba. That Allah said, the Prophet Sallallahu said, the Messenger of Allah said, and the Sahaba said, that is ilm. Ma'am, ilm is not just, oh, I heard this and I heard that, or, yani, you know, that's not ilm. So and so said, that's not ilm. What I mean, so and so, yani, from the human beings, the Mashaykh, uh, 
from the scholars, the teachers, or whoever outside of uh, what was mentioned. You understand? No, that's not in. Knowledge is, Allah said, a verse from the Quran. The Prophet ﷺ said, a hadith that is authentic. Or the Sahaba said, the companions, na'am, the companions. Yani, a athar, that is authentic. Authentically reported upon the companion. This is a Anything outside of this, anything outside of this, then no, no, no. It has to be reference to the proofs and the evidences. In any event, in any event, it is a must that we have this understanding and we come to this agreement that everything we do will be based upon proofs and evidences. Now, so how much now more so important is it to have proofs and evidences for the likes of this? In any event, what is the proof and what is the evidence? That we have to comply to La ilaha illallah. That comes in Surah Luqman and it's verse 22. So it's verse 22 from Surah Luqman. Ma'am. Verse 22 from Surah Luqman. Qala Allah Ta'ala. Allah the Most High, He says, Woman, Woman Yuslim, Wajhahu illallah, Wahua Muhsin. فَقَدْ إِسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْمُثْقَى Allah Ta'ala, He says what it means. And whoever submits his face to Allah, whoever submits his face to Allah, and he is muhsin. He is muhsin. InshaAllah Ta'ala, we'll explain uh, what is the meaning of muhsin and we'll leave it untranslated. Okay? For now. He, and he is muhsin. Then, he will have taken hold of the most trustworthy handhold. That if he submits his face unto Allah, and he is muhsin, na'am, or if she submits her face to Allah, and she is muhsina, then they will have taken hold of the most trustworthy handhold. Of the most trustworthy handhold. And the meaning, to go back to the verse, the meaning of, Yuslim wajha, that he submits his face. The meaning of he submits his face, a yanqadu, meaning that he is compliant. He is compliant. Naam, that he listens, he implements the command. He implements that which he has been commanded to do. He's compliant to the command. This is what that means. That he's compliant or that she is compliant to the command. And they implement and they fulfill what they have been commanded to do. And the meaning of muhsin, right? And he is muhsin or she is muhsina. What does that mean? That means a muwahid. That they establish tawheed. That they implement tawheed. That they are a monotheist. Okay? They are monotheist. That they worship Allah and they worship Allah alone. That they are upon the, yani, uh, acting with that which is necessitated. After having believed in it properly with all of its conditions, establish, believing it and establishing its pillars, and then therefore establishing that which is necessitated by it, a eh, by la ilaha illallah, which means la ma'abuda bihaqin illallah, that nothing has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. And this is how it should be um, translated. This is how it should be translated. And those other translations, which will not be mentioned now, but they were mentioned in previous classes, so you may go back to them to catch up on that, are incorrect, as stated and as explained over there. The true meaning is, nothing has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. That is the meaning of La ilaha illallah. Naam. So this individual, he is muhsin, meaning that he implements and he establishes at tawheed That he implements and he establishes at tawheed Naam. And what is the meaning of al wuthqa What is the meaning of that? What is that trustworthy handhold? Naam. What is that trustworthy handhold that is mentioned here in the ayah? What is the al wuthqa Naam. As Allah Ta'ala says, فَقَدْ إِسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى Then they would have taken hold onto the most trustworthy handhold. What is that? Most trustworthy handhold. The ulama, they mentioned that what is intended by that is here, 
La ilaha illallah. That it is La ilaha illallah. Naam. It is what? It is La ilaha illallah. Naam. A, a quick uh, pop quiz. <laughs> right? Quick pop quiz. There is mention of Urwat al Wuthqa and grabbing hold on to it. In another verse of the Quran. In another verse of the Quran. And this verse for the Quran is very important because in it is a proof and evidence for the meaning of La ilaha illallah. In this ayah, right, there is a proof and evidence for the meaning of La ilaha illallah. So, what I want the listeners to do, right, is I want you to write what is this verse, what chapter it is found in, and what number is it inside of the, the box there. I want you to write me what is the verse and what number is it, what chapter is it in, and what number is the verse. And I want you to give time for everyone to write that just the number in the verse. Give some time. And then after that, I want someone to actually post the verse itself. I want someone to actually post the verse itself. Play it. Here. <clears throat> also, a proof and evidence for this condition of being compliant to la ilaha illallah. That is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that comes inside of Surah Az-Zumar. It comes inside of Surah Az-Zumar. And it is the 54th verse. It is the 54th verse of Surah Az-Zumar. Naam? Tayyip. قال الله سبحانه وتعالى الله تعالى he says وأنيبوا إلى ربكم وأسلموا له and turn repentively unto your Lord turn repentively unto your Lord and submit yourselves unto him and submit yourselves unto him نعم and again, this is in Surah Al Zumar, in his verse 54. And in that, there is the dalil that we have to be compliant. We have to be compliant. Also, in this ayah, as the ayah goes on to say, which shows us that the stakes are very high, being compliant, you know, is really is not an option for us. Yani, the, the question does not come be compliant or not. Huh? That's not that's not a real question for a person that 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 is sane, but there is no option except but to be compliant. Now, I mean, why wouldn't you want to be compliant to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Why wouldn't you want to be compliant to the Lord of everything? Why wouldn't you want to be compliant to your Lord who created you and all that you see? Why wouldn't you want to be compliant to your Lord who has given you all of those things that you cherish and you hold dear unto you? Now, why wouldn't you want to listen to him when he only commands you to do that which will benefit you and he prevents you and forbids you from that which will harm you? Why wouldn't you want to listen to your Lord Azza wa Jal? Now, so really it's not, it's not a real option. It's not a question for the one who has an intellect and one who has a brain. But the stakes are very high. Nonetheless, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say here in this ayah from Surah Al-Zumar in his verse 54, Allah ta'ala, he says, Min qabl. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَى رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمْ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمْ الْعَذَابِ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ And turn repentantly unto your Lord and submit yourselves unto Him until or before, excuse me, before there comes to you a punishment. Before there comes to you the punishment and then after which you will have no helpers. And then after which you will have no helpers. No. Allah must die. It is a must and it is a comment that we are compliant unto Allah Azza wa Jal. 
And what is meant by this? A raji'u ila rabbikum. Yani return unto your Lord. Return unto your Lord wa asimu lahu. Return to your Lord and submit yourselves unto him. And yani be compliant unto Allah Azza wa Jal. Wa an Abdullah bin, uh, bin Umar marfu'an. And it is it is, comes a hadith on Abdullah bin, bin Amr. And it is marfu'an. His chain reaches back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam, his chain, the chain of this hadith, it reaches back unto the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Walakin. But the hadith is da'if. The hadith is weak in its chain. The chain of the hadith, it is weak. Naam. And the reason that you find that this chain, that, that, that this chain is uh, uh, da'if is that you have narrators inside the chain that are da'if. You have narrators inside the chain that are weak. However, the meaning of the hadith is authentic. The meaning of the hadith is authentic. Naam. But the, but the chain is da'if. But what it means, the meaning, it is correct. I'm saying that to say this because when there is a chain of a hadith that is da'if, it is not proper to attribute it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not proper to attribute it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam. So we're not attributing it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is taking the takeaway from the meaning because the meaning is authentic. And that is as it comes, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يكون هواه تبعا لما جئت به That none of you truly believes until his desires fall in line to that which I have been sent with. Meaning to that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent with. That none will truly believe until his desires fall in line to that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was sent with. And again, the chain of this hadith is ضعيف. It's da'if. Naam. So we're not bringing this weak hadith as a proof. It's not a proof. It's not a proof. It's not a proof. As the ulama, they explain the likes of this situation. We don't call this hadith a proof, but it is a supporting reference. Right? It is, it is a reference that supports what is being mentioned, but it's not a proof. Okay? Uh, and it's important that uh, everyone understands this. Allah Azza wa Jal, He also says in His noble book, which shows us the same meaning, and that it is a must and it is incumbent that we are compliant to that which we are commanded to do, and at the head of it, that we are compliant to utter, to say, and to believe in, and to implement La ilaha illallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنًا وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةً إِذَا قَضَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخَيْرَةُ خِيْرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ That it is not proper for the believing man, nor the believing woman, that when Allah and His Messenger have made a decision, that they have any type of decision as relates to it. Naam, that when Allah and His Messenger have made a decision, Naam, it is not proper that they have any type, يعني خِيْرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ That they have any type of yeah, any decision as it relates to it. Do it, don't do it, I don't nah, do it, that's it. There's no there's no there's no uh there's no choice, right? There's no choice for the one who truly believes, who truly submits itself unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such is not proper. Such is not proper. Nah. Before going on to the next, we want to go back and look at the quiz. Did we get it? Ah. That's La ilaha illallah. The meaning of it. Is found inside a dalil for the meaning of it is found inside of this ayah. And inside of this ayah, there is mention of Urwat al Wuthqa, the most trustworthy handhold. It is contained inside of this ayah. But that ayah is ayah 256 in Surah Al Baqarah. 256 in Surah Al Baqarah. Naam, Well done. And, and where is the proof of evidence and how it is a evidence for the meaning of La ilaha illallah? Because rem, as a reminder, the meaning of La ilaha illallah is La ma'abuda bihaqi illallah, that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. 
So we find therein what? A negation. And we find therein an affirmation. We find therein a negation for everything that is worship other than Allah. And then we find therein an affirmation that all worship belongs unto Allah Azza wa Jal. We find the same components here in this ayah from Surah Al-Baqarah. And to make it easy so that no one ever forgets yani, where this ayah is located, it is the ayah that comes right after Ayatul Kursi. It is the ayah that comes directly after Ayatul Kursi. And that is Allah Ta'ala's statement, La ikraha fi din There is no compulsion inside of the religion. Qad tabayyana rushdu min al-ghayt Because the guidance had been made known from the misguidance. Yani the, the truth is clear from the error. Naam, the shahid is Allah Ta'ala's statement as relates to what is the meaning or the dalil for the meaning of La ilaha illallah and that is Allah Ta'ala's statement. فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ So whoever disbelieves in the false deities. Whoever disbelieves in the false deities. Naam, so this is a disbelief, this is a, neg a, a negation of what? Of the false deities. Just like La ilaha. None has the right to be worshipped. This is a negation of the false deities. Then Allah Ta'ala goes on to say, وَيُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ And they believe in Allah. Here is what is an affirmation of that all worship belongs unto Allah Azza wa Jal. So this matches up with what? Illallah in what? In the kalima, uh, 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 in the kalima of at tawheed La ilaha illallah. And then for the quiz, what we were looking for was فَقَدِسْتَمْ سَكَ Then they will have taken hold of what? بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى They will have taken hold of the most trustworthy handhold. لَا مُفِصَوَمَ لَهَا That which will not sever, it will not break. It will not sever and it will not break. So the person, they came now and they looked and they said, Okay, well how do we understand from the ayat that was aforementioned that عُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى Then it means لَا إِلَهَا اللَّهِ Then if you look back to this ayat that was mentioned here in Surah Al-Baqarah, then you will see how that is understood because in Surah Al-Baqarah is clearly explained uh, that what is being that what is meant by the most trustworthy handhold that it is la ilaha illallah naam so this is why when you come to this ayah uh, now then you see oh naam this is referring to la ilaha illallah and that's why that's why it is brought as a proof for the condition of la ilaha illallah naam fahamt wadah inshallah inshallah is that, is that clear makes sense Inshallah. Fifthly, fifthly, the fifth condition is Sidq. Is that a person has to deem it to be true. He has to, he has to deem it that it's true. This is accurate. Now, Al-Munafi al kadhib That which will negate lying. That he, he, he sees it as being true or she sees it as being true and they do not belie it. They do not belie it. Ma'am, they do not deem it as being false. But they see it as being true. This is very important. Because remember, the hypocrites, they say, La ilaha illallah. The hypocrites, they say it with their tongues. Right? And they even bring forth some actions like prayer and, you know, fasting and so on and so forth. But it, none of that benefits them. Why? Because in their hearts, they don't believe it. In their hearts, they think it's wrong. In their hearts, they belie it. They don't believe it. They don't deem it as being true. They just doing whatever they doing because they looking for some yeah, I mean, benefit of the dunya and, 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 and you know and so on and so forth. They're using it as a shield to protect themselves and safeguard themselves, but they don't believe in it. So therefore, it doesn't it doesn't help them. It doesn't help them. You understand? So it is a must that not only do we uh uh have knowledge of it, not only do we have to be certain of of, of its meaning, not only are we to accept it and, and, and then to comply with that which is necessitated by it? But we have to do all of that while believing in it. That is true. Believing that is true. Now, believing that is true. Because not everyone does that. Not everyone who says they believe truly believe. You understand? Not everyone who says with their tongue that they are believers, they really are believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He shows us who we really are. And this is by putting us through trials and tribulations. That person who he truly believes, he's not shaken. His faith does not waver in the face of trials and tribulations because that's this life. In this life, we get faced with trials and tribulations. Ma'am, that's, that's this life. You understand? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he promises this. 
that this is going to happen to us, that we're going to be touched, we're going to be tested with trials and tribulations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this. Right? Allah ta'ala, he says, Alif la meem. Ahasib al-nasu an yutraku an yakulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun. Allah ta'ala, he says in surah al-ankabut. And in this, there is the, this is the proof that we have to uh, deem it as true. We have to deem it as being true and we can't belie it. Huh? We can't belie it. Allah Ta'ala, he says in Surah An-Kabut, in his verse 1 to 3, Alif Lam Mim. Second verse, do mankind think that they'll be left alone to say that they believe and that they won't be tested? And that they will not be tested? In the third ayah, Allah Ta'ala, he says, وَلَقَدَ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ And verily we tested those who have come before them. Then, verily we have tested those who have come before them. فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ So that it will be known. Right? And this is how it was, what is understood. Uh, so that Allah will know those who are truthful from those who are liars. Those who are truthful from those who are liars. Meaning, so that it is known those who are truthful from those who are liars. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He already knows. He already knows who says it truthfully and who says it lying before the test. Allah knows before the test. But the test comes so as so what? As an establishment of the proof against the slave himself. So now the slave can't come on a day of judgment and say, no, 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 I truly believe. I wasn't given a chance. No, you're given a chance. But when the tests come now, then they fail the test and they, they disbelieve and they turn their heels upon Islam because things get rough and tough for them and so on and so forth. Then now they can't come your muqiyam and say anything. The test came they, and they left. So they can't come and say anything. But they would have, no, you, what you did is there. You understand? Allah already knows though. Allah already knows. So that, that, that test that comes, it is who benefits from that knowledge? The slave himself. The slave himself benefits. Because Allah, Allah Ta'ala, He already knows. He already knows who's truthful. And He already knows who's a liar. Ma'am, ala kulli hal. This ayah shows us here, and we understand from this that what? That the liars, they won't, they won't benefit from it. The liars are not going to benefit from it. Those who didn't believe in it, they're not going to benefit from it. The only ones who want to benefit from it are those who believe in it. Those who believe in it, they are the only ones who are going to benefit from it. Naam. And in that, and in that, we understand the importance why it is vital for us to, to deem it as being true and to believe in it. To deem it as being true and to believe in it. Naam. What also will further this, further highlight this is Allah Ta'ala's statement. Is Allah Ta'ala's statement. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ And from mankind there are those who say that we believe in Allah and the last day, but they are really not believers. Right? There are those who say it with their tongues, but they're really not believers. Why? Because they don't believe it in their hearts. They deem it as being wrong. They belie it. Okay? Allah Ta'ala says about the likes of these individuals, يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ They try and they seek to deceive Allah and those who believe, but they only, they only deceive themselves while they perceive not. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضُ Inside of their hearts, there is a disease. The disease of what? Of hypocrisy. The disease of hypocrisy. Naam. Allah Ta'ala, He says, فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضَ So Allah increases for them their disease. And the jazam and just an amal. Because the punishment will be appropriate to the crime. The person put the disease of hypocrisy in his heart. So because he put it in his heart himself, then Allah Ta'ala increases it for him. He put hypocrisy in his heart. Allah increases it for him. You understand? The man made himself sick with hypocrisy. So Allah increases him in his sickness. In his hypocrisy. Ah. Allah Ta'ala, he says, وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And they will have a punishment that is alim. 
أليم يعني أليم أليم not elim not it hurt you talking alim this is a pain of which a person can't comprehend this is yani pain at the full extent in the opinion of what pain is and then more the alim adab al alim for these hypocrites for these ones who who think they can trick allah for these ones who have such a disease and such a wicked heart that they think they can fool allah azza wa jalla for them will be a painful punishment And here's a shahid here. Why? Bima kanu yakdibun. Because of what they used to belie. They used to belie it. So even though they said la ilaha illallah, they thought it was wrong. They thought it was a lie. They belied it. So in addition to having knowledge of it, right? To having certainty of its meaning, to accepting it, and to uh, acting uh, in accordance to it, a person, he has to what? He has to believe that is correct. Has to believe that is correct. Ma'am. In these two. Or in these two portions from the Quran. These verses from the Quran. Ma'am. The first of which was read. That was mentioned from Surah, is Surah Ankabut. Verse 1 to 3. The second group of verses. Was from Surah Al-Baqarah. In his verse 8 to 10. Verse 8 to 10. And these we understand that we have to, that we have to what? We have to have, a, yani, uh, we have to deem la ilaha illallah as being true. Because those who deem it as being a lie, then we see it doesn't benefit them. Those hypocrites, even though they say it, because they believe it's a lie, it does not benefit them. So we have to believe and have to know it's true. وَعَنْ Anas رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى عَنْهُ And on the authority of Anas رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى عَنْهُ قَالْ قَالْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ يَشْهَدْ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He said, there is no one who testifies and bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. And that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And here's the, here, and here is the shahid. Here is the point of reference right here. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He just didn't say whoever says that, whoever testifies that, and that's it. No, but he said what? Sidqan. Truthfully, they believe it's true. They believe it's true. They say it truthfully, and they believe it's true. Whoever says that, and they believe it's true. Yani, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, Sidqan min qalbihi. He he believes it's true from his heart. He says it, from, and he believes it in his heart. It's true. Huh? Whoever says it and he believes it from his heart that is true, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِلَّا حَرَّمَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى النَّارِ Except that Allah will make the fire prohibited for that person. Whoever says, لا إله إلا الله محمد الرسول الله Truly from their heart, believing that it is true in their heart, whoever does that, The fire will be haram for that person. That person is in will be the jannah. Naam. The fire will be haram for that person. Naam. And we understand from all the proofs and the evidences that you bring them all together is that what is that this person, even if he has to go to a portion of the fire to get his sins, yani be purified from his sins, he will not stay in the fire forever. He will not stay in the fire forever. No person who says La ilaha illallah will stay in the fire forever. Even if they have to enter into it to be cleansed because of some sins. They will not stay there forever. No way. Not possible. No, not possible. This hadith is collected by Al-Bukhari and is collected by Muslim. Hadithun mutafiqun alay. It's a hadith that is mutafiqun alay. And I didn't forget. In the last class, right, that we had for this, yeah, we asked what is mutafiqun alay? What is that? And what is his level? And nobody answered. So I still want to answer. I ain't forget. I still want to answer. Now, what does it mean? Mutafiqun alay? And what is the level and the strength of that hadith? I still want to answer. What are you? Next point. The next condition. For la ilaha illallah. Now, we took so far five. 
So going on now to the sixth, the sixth condition is al-ikhlas, is that we have to have sincerity. We have to be sincere and we have to have sincerity and purity and purity of worship so that all of our ibadah is sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are true monotheist Naam. that all of our worship is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's what is meant here by al-ikhlas and we understand that right due to al-ikhlas al-munafil al-shirk the ikhlas that it will negate polytheism. You understand? See, this is translated, right? Um, and this is not a knock to the translators. Even myself is translated at, like like this as sincerity, right? It's not a knock to the translators, you know? Because even myself, I translated like that. However, when you say sincerity, that produces a meaning in English that is is lacking in really everything that is intended by the word al ikhlas. Nam. And this is one of the things that's lost in translation, and this is one of the uh, proofs and the, the motivations for all of us, you know, myself first and foremost, that we have to learn Arabic. We have to learn Arabic so that we may enrich our understanding of the deen. We have to learn Arabic. Now we have to. Okay, this is another reminder that English uh, or whatever language is utilized as a tr as, as a medium language for translation, right? That that medium right? by way in which you understand what's, what is what uh, is there in Arabic due to its translation. It is a crutch. It is a crutch. And crutches, however good they may be, right? However good a crutch may be, is it, it, it is not as good as the leg that is healthy. You understand what I'm saying? No matter how good a crutch is, it's not as good as the leg that is healthy. So it's never going to be on the same level. You understand? You can, you know, I'm not the fastest person in the world, right? But you bring me anybody on a crutch and we and we're going to have a race, I'm going to win. Okay? Because you got a crutch. You understand what I'm saying? So... No matter how good the crutch may be, it's not as good as a leg that is sound. It's not good as a healthy leg. So at some point, we got to get rid of the crutch and we got to start walking on healthy legs. And that is yani, by learning the Arabic language. The, the translation is a crutch. Anyway, when you say sincerity, yani, what's understood by sincerity is that they are sincere and that their worship is yani, uh, pure. It's purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that, that their worship is purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That type of purity that negates polytheism. That type of purity of worship that negates polytheism. There is no room inside of their worship to worship anything else. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what they worship. This is what is meant by ikhlas. Now, this is what is meant by ikhlas. So with that being the case, you know, it might be better just to understand the concept of the meaning of it and what is intended by it and don't even worry about trying to translate it here and calling it whatever. Yeah. In any event, Alakulid. Ikhlas Hua the Sheikh he explains Ikhlas Hua Tusfiyatul Amal that it means to purify the actions. To purify the actions, the Salah with a pure intention. So you purify your actions with a pure intention. Right? With a pure intention. That you're doing it only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Jamir Shawaib Shirk that you purify your actions with a pure intentions from all of the things of shirk, from all aspects, all forms, all types of shirk. And this is what the great uh Shaykh Fadil to Shaykh Shaykh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab Al Wasabi Rahmatullah Alay he mentions that this is what is intended by Ikhlas purifying the action with a sound and a correct intention. From all aspects of shirk. There's no aspects of shirk that are contained therein. And what are the proofs and the evidences which point to this? That our, that our ibadah, our worship, it has to be pure and sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is Allah ta'ala's statement in Surah Zumar. In Surah Zumar, in his verse number two. Allah ta'ala, he says, فَعْبُدِ مُخْلِصٌ لَهُ الدِّينَ And worship Allah alone, making all of the religion sincerely for him alone. Right? Worship Allah alone. Mukhlisun. Mukhlis. See the mukhlis, this is the one who implements ikhlas. Right? The mukhlis, this is the one who he implements ikhlas. He has sincerity, he's sincere. He has purity of worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam, this is the mukhlis. So Allah Ta'ala says, Fa'budillaha mukhlisun. 
upon ikhlas lahuddin making all of the religion sincerely and purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah ta'ala he, he, he says in surah al-bayyina and it's verse number 5 verse number 5 now And I want somebody to write. I'm still looking for, by the way, the the other quiz for Mutafiqun Ali. I'm still looking for that. I still ain't see it. Still looking for that. Huh? What does it mean? And what's the level of that type of hadith? But I got another quiz for you. Is that is in this next ayah, I want you to tell me what is the word that is utilized in the ayah which points to a proof and evidence for this particular point. What is the word itself? Right? And you should know because I, I regain the answer in the other ayah we just said, but we see Allah Ta'ala قال الله Ta'ala وما أمروا this is Surah Al-Bayna verse number 5 Allah Ta'ala he says وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا الله مخلصين له الدين and then we're not I'm just going to translate I want you to tell me what is the word here that is the point of reference for this particular point and they were not commanded except to worship Allah alone making all of the religion sincerely unto him and they were not commanded Except to worship Allah alone, making all of the religions sincerely for Him. Naam, Tayyib. Wa'an Abi Hurairah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, As'adu al-nas, as'adu al-nas, bi shafa'ati yawm al-qiyamah, من قال لا إله إلا الله خالصا من قلبه رواه البخاري رواه البخاري نعم حياك الله نعم أحسنت when a hadith is متفق عليه it means it is agreed upon both in الصحيح البخاري and صحيح مسلم نعم that is correct نعم also for as the uh, answer uh, what is the word that is the point of reference inside of the verse? That was a formation from Surah al bayyina Mukhlisin. Naam. Ahsantum. Ahsantum. Only one more thing missing, and that is what is the, how strong is the hadith that's mutafiqun alayh? How strong is it? Naam. Tayyip. Back to this hadith that is collected by Al-Bukhari from the hadith of Abu Huraira, which is a proof and evidence that for the sixth condition of La ilaha illallah, and that is that it has to be purely, huh, pure, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, had to have ikhlas. Hey, now nah, that's just easier, right? You gotta have ikhlas, right? But, and that is the statement of the Prophet. So I said, he said that the most happiest of the people to, 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 to get my intercession on the day of judgment, that it will be the one who says, La ilaha illallah, khalisan. He says it sincerely, yeah, and purely from his heart, sincerely from his heart, meaning he has ikhlas. He has a khlaus. He has a khlaus. There also comes a hadith on Utban bin Malik radiyallahu anhu قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله حرم على النار من قال لا إله إلا الله يبتغي بذلك وجه الله That Allah he has made the fire prohibited upon the one who says لا إله إلا الله the one who intends by way of it the face of Allah. He intends by it the face of Allah. So when he says La ilaha illallah, he's not looking for any type of praise. He's not looking for any type of worldly gain. He's not looking to, you know, to gain a job. He's not looking you know, to you know, just say shahada because he want to marry somebody. You understand? But what? But he say it sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They say it purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have what? Ikhlas. They have ikhlas. Naam. And his hadith, his hadith is mutafiqun alay. حديث متفق على نعم ده وزني للسكست نعم إن شاء الله تعالى if I have your own permission we would like to extend the classes a little bit بإذن الله تعالى so we can finish this particular chapter uh, especially being that we are Ahead of Ramadan, we would like to finish the chapter. So in Ramadan, yeah, I mean, the lessons could be uh, subject matter appropriate to the time, the auspicious occasion, the time that we would be in yeah, in the month of Ramadan. So inshallah ta'ala, if you would just bear with me a moment. May Allah ta'ala reward each and every one of you. 
This, the seventh condition is Al-Muhabba Al-Muhabba Al-Munafi Al-Munafiya lil That is that we have to love it We have to love La ilaha illallah Naam Muhabba Lihadihi al-kalima Al-Azima Al-Mubaraka That we have to love this This blessed word This blessed And tremendous statement We have to love it Naam The proof of that That we have to love it And in that because in loving it, that is connected to what? To a person's love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is so important that we understand this. You understand? Is that if a person, when a person truly loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what? Then they worship him and him alone. They don't make shirk. They don't make polytheism. Those people who are polytheists, in reality, they do not love Allah. In reality, they do not love Allah. Because... If you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will give unto Allah that which belongs to Him, and you will not give that which belongs to Allah to other than Him. Ibadah, worship, belongs unto Allah Azza wa Jal alone. So when you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you give all the worship unto Allah Azza wa Jal. You don't be giving Allah's worship to somebody else, whether it be a prophet, or be an angel, whether it be a rock, a stone, whether it be a celestial body like the, like a sun or a moon or whatever. Huh? You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't give any, any, any ibadah to anything. Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Because it all belongs to him It all belongs to him Okay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ Allah ta'ala says And from mankind There are those who have taken Others as partners and rivals Along with Allah they have taken associates, they associate partners with Allah and worship. They they have false deities. They have taken these things and they love them, huh? And they love them like they love Allah. But those who believe they love Allah more. Those who believe they love Allah more. The ulama they say. Because those who believe their love for Allah is a love that is pure. They love Allah is pure. They don't share their love for Allah with something else. But those who Associate partners with Allah Azza wa Jal, they share the love that they have for Allah with other things. This is a love that is shirk. This is a love that is shirk. This is a love that is haram. Because you know, loves of different types. Ma'am, you have a love that's shirk. Of course, a love that's shirk is not permissible. Shirk is polytheism. And this is that type of love. When you love something, like you should love Allah Azza wa Jal. Those who believe, they love Allah more because their love for Allah is pure. So, in order to benefit, in order to benefit, we have to be of those who we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they're going to say la ilaha illallah. They're going to believe in la ilaha illallah. They're going to implement and to establish la ilaha illallah. Naam. This is, this is a must. Loving Allah is, is essential. You understand? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He informs us who benefits from this? Because when we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, huh, and we do what, what, what is correct, we are the ones who benefit. <laughs> you understand? That benefits us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in no need of us. Allah ta'ala does not need us at all. Allah ta'ala doesn't need that we love him or not. Allah ta'ala doesn't need anything. So us loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that benefits us. But the issue, as ulama they say, الشأن كل شأن أن لا تحب ولكن الشأن كل شأن أن تحب ها الشأن أن لا تحب ولكن الشأن أن تحب is that the issue? The issue is not that you love Allah. You understand? That's not that's not the, really the heart of the issue. The issue is not that you love Allah, but the issue is whether or not Allah loves you. That's the issue. You understand? Anybody who is sound, who is sound in his mind, of course he's going to love Allah. Now, anyone sound in their mind, they're going to love Allah. But the issue is whether or not Allah loves you. You see, Allah loves those who truly believe in him. Those who truly love him. Those who are upon tawheed. Those who are upon true monotheism. Those are the ones whom Allah Ta'ala loves. If the human beings decided they're not going to do that, listen to what Allah Ta'ala says. Allah Ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. مَنْ يَرْتَدَّ مِنْكُمْ عَنْ دِينِهِ فَسَوْفَ يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَهُ This is in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Allah Ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, if you all 
turn apostate upon your religion, if you all leave Islam, that won't hurt Allah. No way. Allah Ta'ala says, then Allah will bring another people who he will love them and they will love him. You understand? So the issue is not whether we love, the issue is whether or not we are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In any event, those who truly love Allah, then they are those who implement the tawheed. The Prophet sallallahu he tells in the famous hadith, the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, فِيمَا رَوَاهُ الْبُخَارِ وَمُسْلِمْ That is مُتَثِقٌ عَلَيْهِ اَيْنَامْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ That is the, uh, the answer for the previous question. I'm going back, yani, that مُتَثِقٌ uh, عَلَيْهِ Then is hadith that is the strongest, the strongest hadith, the most authentic hadith. نَعْمْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ Very well done. In a hadith that is مُتَثِقٌ عَلَيْهِ Strongest level of authenticity of a hadith. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, ثَلَاثَ مَنْ the Prophet Sallallahu said, Thalatha man kunna fihi wajada bihinna halawatul iman. That there are three characteristics that whoever wajada, whoever has them inside of yani, him, then he will find the sweetness of iman. The first one, أَنْ يَكُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَبُّ إِلَيْهِ مِمَّا سِوَاهُمَا Is that Allah and His Messenger, they are more beloved to Him than other than them too. That Allah and His Messenger are more beloved to Him than other than those two. Meaning that what? That when it comes to when it comes to who we love, then we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than everything else. We love Allah more than everything else. And that we love Allah for Allah. Now, we love Allah for Allah. You understand what I mean? Meaning that the love for everything other than Allah is connected to our love for Allah. We love Allah. Yeah, I mean, we love Allah. Anything else, anything, and everyone else who we love is connected to our love for Allah. And this brings us to what was mentioned next. Whoever loves Allah and what? His messenger. So our love for the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We don't love the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No. We don't love the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bidhati. We don't love him because of him himself. But we love him and our love for him is because it's connected to our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yes, we love the Prophet sallallahu more than we love every other human being including ourselves. Why? Because he is the most righteous slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the most obedient slave and servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we love him more than we even love ourselves. Because he is more righteous, he is more Obeying, he's more obedient unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has more fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So because, because our love for the Prophet ﷺ is connected to our love for Allah, the one who is more righteous, then we're going to love him more. You understand? Everyone's more right, going to love them more. Because our love for that person is connected to our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why we don't love any human being more than we love the Prophet ﷺ. Not even ourselves, not even our children, not even our parents. But we love the Prophet ﷺ more. Why? Because he's more obedient. To Allah Azza wa Jal. You see, our love for him is connected to our love to, to or for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a proof of that, just yeah, briefly, sidetrack, a proof of that, that we have to love the Prophet more than we love any other human being, is what? Is that the Prophet is like, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده ووالده والناس أجمعين. He said that none of you truly believes until I become more beloved to him. Then his parents, his children, and all of mankind. Why? Because what was aforementioned? The hadith mutafiqun alayh from the hadith of Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Naam. So, it's not to be understood here that we love the Prophet Sallallahu like we love Allah. No. No way. We love Allah more than we love everything. Everything. And our love for the Prophet Sallallahu is connected to our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi more than we love every other human being, including ourselves. Wallah, inshallah that makes sense. Now, so whoever has this is the first characteristic. The second characteristic, and يحب المر لا يحبه إلا لله. Shuf. And he loves a person, and he only loves that person for Allah. He loves a person, and he loves that person only for Allah. Now, this is this is vital that we love each other for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The person who truly loves his brother or his sister, right? For Allah, then they will advise them. They will advise them. They will guide them to what is correct. Warn them from what is wrong. 
encourage them to do good, prohibit them from sin. Why? Because they love them. They don't want to see them get themselves in trouble with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma'am, this is a sign of what truly loving each other for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we advise one another with that which is good. The last, uh, that's, that's number two. The second, يَقْرَهَ أَنْ يَعُودَ فِي الْكُفْرِ بَعْدَ أَنْ أَنْقَذَهُ اللَّهُ مِنْهُ كَمَا يَقْرَهُ أَنْ يَقْذَفَ فِي النَّارِ Is that they will, that they hate, they hate to return back to kufr after Allah has saved them from it, just like they hate to be thrown in a fire. الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved us. You understand? Saved us. Many of us, we used to be kuffar. We used to be disbelievers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved us. Guided us to Islam. Gave us the success in accepting Islam. Guided us to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to hold on to that. You understand? That a person, they will hate to return to kufr after Allah has saved them from it. Just like they'll hate to be thrown inside of a fire. I mean, fire here, like a, a worldly fire. Somebody made a, a bonfire, whatever, and they told you, yo, jump in it. You look at them like they're crazy. What you mean, jump in that fire? I ain't jumping in that fire. You say, man, it's the fire of the dunya, man. Just go ahead, jump in it. Walk through it. Let's see what happens. Jump in it. Stay there five seconds. Let's see. Let's see how long you can stay. You'll hate that. You're no way. Right? If they try if they try to grab you to bring you to it, you'll be fighting and, yeah, you know, all everything you got. You ain't be throwing that fire. You understand? So, Likewise, a person should hate to revert back to kufr. Likewise, the same way you're going to fight and struggle if somebody's trying to throw you inside of a bonfire, huh? If somebody's trying to throw you in an oven somewhere, you're going to be fighting them. Likewise, fight. Run away from the kufr. We don't want that stuff. Stuff that's connected with that lifestyle. We don't want that. We left that. What do we want that for? We ain't going back to that. We don't want that. But it's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, subhanAllah, it's unfortunate. How many Muslims now live in their life like one foot in, one foot out? SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah. على كل حال this hadith متفقون عليه متفقون عليه that we hate to go back to kufr just like we hate to be thrown inside of a fire which brings us to the eighth condition and some of the scholars they bring an eighth condition now some bring seven some bring eight and we, we mentioned this before we're not going to mention not going to repeat it inshallah but that eighth condition is kufr bit ta'ut is that we disbelieve in the false deities that we have kufr bit ta'ut we disbelieve in the false deities. Now, and this is meaning that we disbelieve in everything that is worshipped other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We disbelieve in that. If somebody worships a rock, we don't believe that that's correct. We don't believe in that. That that that, that rock is your, you know, your deity. We don't believe in that deity. Somebody, you know, upon, you know, whatever, you know, polytheist uh, deen, we don't believe in that. We don't believe in that. Now, we don't believe in that. What's the proof and evidence? What's the proof and evidence? It's the ayah from Surah Al-Baqarah. Now, the ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah is also proof and evidence for we have this. We have to disbelieve in the, in the Barut. And that is the ayah that comes after ayah, ayah to Kursi. Now, and that is Allah Ta'ala's statement. قَدْ تَبَيَّنَ الرُّشْدُ مِنَ الْغَيْءِ that the truth has been made clear from the falsehood. Whoever disbelieves in the false deities and they believe in Allah. That's the point of evidence right there. They disbelieve in the false deities. It is a must that we disbelieve in the false deities. Ma'am, and that's Surah Al-Baqarah. And I ain't going to tell you what the number of the verse because he told you before. You tell me. How about that? You tell me what's the number of the verse, inshallah. And it's real easy because, I mean, Literally, the verse is written in the comment section. A few comments up. So, yeah, alhamdulillah. But anybody who's not here and they happen to hear this later and there's no comment section, then just re press rewind. Inshallah ta'ala, you'll find it. Then it comes a hadith that's collected by Muslim. An Tariq bin Ashim, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Qal, sami'atu Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul. من قال لا إله إلا الله وكفر بما يعبى من دون الله حرم يعني حرم ماله حرم ماله ودمه وحسابه على الله. That whoever says لا إله إلا الله and he 
Kafara bima yu'bad min dunillahi. He disbelieves in that which is worship other than Allah. Then his money and his blood will be made haram and his reckoning will be upon Allah. And his reckoning will be upon Allah. Ma'am, so it is a must that we have disbelief in that which is worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a quick side point, as a quick benefit, a person may come and they say, well, what do you mean have disbelief? Because there's, the, yani some people, they worship the angels. We believe in the angels. So what do you mean disbelief? Meaning that we disbelieve in the legitimacy of them worshiping the angels. Yes, we believe in the angels, but they're not to be worshipped. So we don't believe that it's okay to worship them. Likewise, those people who worship certain prophets and messengers, we believe in those prophets and messengers. And we know that those prophets and the messengers, they are free from what the people are doing in their name. They are free from it. They have nothing to do with it. Now, and we defend them from these lies that are being launched inside of their name. And we believe in them. But we disbelieve in the legitimacy of worshipping them. We disbelieve in, in the legitimacy of worshipping them. And they are free from what the people do as they to themselves disbelieve in the legitimacy of worshipping them. As they disbelieve in the legitimacy of worshipping anything outside of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because all of the prophets and the messengers, they came to mankind to as to teach them, La ilaha illallah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells in this noble book, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةَ الرَّسُولَ أَنْ يَعْبَدُ اللَّهَ مُشْتَلِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ And we sent to every nation a messenger proclaiming, worship Allah alone and stay away from the false deities. And staying away from the false deities, meaning stay away from them in totality. Don't get near to them. So definitely don't believe in them. Stay away from them in totality. Don't believe in them. Have a disbelief in them. This is what every messenger, every prophet, every messenger they taught to their people. Ma'am. So this is a side point in case that became a, a, a point of confusion for someone some at some time or what have you. And so as to conclude... Um, we go back to those lines of poetry that contain all of these proofs and these evidence, all of these conditions, excuse me, all of the conditions for the shahada or the first part of the shahada of La ilaha illallah. And that is those two lines of poetry which go as Ilmun yaqeenun wa ikhlasun wa sidqu ka ma'a mahabba wa inqiyat wa al-qubur laha wa zila thaminuha wa zila thaminuha Kufran min kabima siwan ila min al asha qad uliha. And that is ilm, knowledge, yaqeen, certainty, or, or, or excuse me, ain't not certainty, ikhlaus, huh? Remember, we're not going to translate ikhlaus, ikhlaus, sidq, truthfulness, mahabba, love, inqiyad, compliance, wal laha, and accepting it. And then an eighth is added, and that is kufran min kabima. That eighth which is added, then that is a disbelief which emanates from you. For all of those things other than Allah that are taken as objects of worship. From all of those things other than Allah that are taken and made as objects of worship. That we have a complete disbelief in that. And this will brings us to the end of this particular topic fa naktafi bihadha alqadar wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa jazakumullahu khairan